Hi, my name is Saul Ruelas. My name is Richard Stanette. Eric Camacho. And this is our solenoid motor. It uses electromagnetics to move a piston, which moves a, and spins a crankshaft, causing the general principles of an engine. Uh, I'm going to be describing the mechanical considerations taken into account in this system. In order for the solenoid motor to work, a lot of the mechanical measurements need to be taken into consideration. These measurements need to be extremely precise. That way the electromagnetic forces can have the desired influence on our mechanical system. The diameter of the solenoid is of significant importance. D by 2 or the length of the diameter of the spool hole divided by 2 is one of the most important. And here you see the, the this is the spool hole and that divided by 2 has to be has to be the distance from here that the, the max distance that the piston can reach. This means your piston should not stick out on the back side of the piston in any case. The material you buy has to be an aluminum spool with an iron piston. The reason for this is because aluminum is necessary because of its low magnetic per permeability. The only thing you want magnetized is to be the piston. That's why we chose an iron piston. If the solenoid spool becomes magnetized as well, then you just have a big electromagnet. Unless you want a big old magnet, then sure, I guess, but you won't have a motor. Haha. <laughs> <laughs> the reason why we included flywheels is because of inertia. The flywheels are essential for energy conservation and acceleration. The larger the radius, the more inertia, however, the heavier they get. The width and the radius of the flywheels need to be calculated so that the optimal inertial for force can be obtained. We hit max RPMs by calculating friction imposed on the system while in horizontal state versus vertical state. A vertical state concluded 3 times more RPMs at 420 versus 180 RPMs in a horizontal state. Also proper lubrication is necessary as well in order to decrease wear and allow free motion. Uh, free motion. Friction limits max RPM, and as you can see right here, you can see the the grease uh, sticking out because we well lubricated our piston. The ratio was designed to be 4 to 1 for the connecting rod to the crank radius. And right here we have the connecting rod, our radius is in here, our crank radius, our crank is in here, and we decide this length to be 4 to 1 from the length of the radius. Um, so that means that the connecting rod is four times longer than the crank radius. Also, as you can see right here, we added a 40 pound weight to reduce the wobbles of the entire system, thus reducing even further inner piston collisions. Briefly explain our motor control system. The control system relies on two microcontrollers that communicate wireless with each other. They are seen here. One of them this microcontroller takes a row of processing the keypad input, which is here. This toggles the motor on or off, sets the motor RPM limit as well. The secondary microcontroller, which is this one, reads signals from a Hall effect sensor over here in the back. Those signals are then processed to determine if the solid state relay should allow power to flow and charge the solenoid. Wireless communication is achieved by using two XB wireless radio frequency transmitter modules. One of them shown here, the other one shown here. These wireless, these wireless modules communicate with a microcontroller over a serial port using the Universal Asynchronous Receiver Transmitter UART communication protocol. One XB is set to be the transmitter here, while the other simply receives and processes the signals. That one is shown here. The two wireless modules are linked together by sharing a unique channel and ID, allowing secure communication between them. When the transmitting microcontroller, which is this one, transmits a signal via UART to the XB, shown here, this XB receives a signal and later emits the signal wirelessly to the secondary XB over here. A solid state relay is used to switch the solenoid on and off. The relay is shown here. As opposed to a mechanical relay, an SSR has no contact failures, generates little noise, and provides high speed, high frequency switching operations. The SSR we have implemented allows us to switch the solenoid on in 7 milliseconds and off in 1 half milliseconds. The SSR only requires an activating current of 10 milliamps, allowing 48 volts to flow through it 
and onto the solenoid. The Hollifax sensor allows precise measurement of the motor's RPM. The Hollifax sensor is shown here. The Hollifax sensor consists of a semiconducting material through which a current is passed. The Hollifax sensor is placed along the crankshaft support armature, which is this right here. On one of the flywheels, magnets have been strategically placed to match the correct firing angle for the solenoid. The magnets are here. As a magnet passes by the detectable field of the sensor, which is the front of the sensor, the po a positive linear output voltage is produced. This follows, this allows for directional movement detection as the flywheel spins in front of the Hall Effect sensor. In the Lorentz force and Faraday's laws of electromagnetics, the generated magnetic field strength is proportional to the square of the current. So if the current through the solenoid is one amp, and we get a force of one newton out, we can pump up the current to six amps and get 36 newtons out. <clears throat> the permeability of the piston is the key component to achieving high RPM and electromagnetic force. Choosing an iron core was the best possible choice given its high permeability and low cost. Since it is ferromagnetic material, saturation of the core was a concern to take into account. Considering that this is a DC motor, a mainly positive hysteresis loop models the magnetism of the ferromagnetic material well enough. The firing angle plays the role of when the solenoid actually creates the magnetic field to pull the piston. The magnetic field must be created as soon as it passes the top dead center, which is at about this point, and absolutely must stop pulling before the bottom dead center, which is at about this point. Much like pushing someone on a swing at the right time for the right amount of time to make them swing faster. The power electronics higher. controlling the applied EMF is our simplest possible design. The simple design was to limit our points of failure. Flyback diodes rated at 10 amps were used across the relay and solenoid to ensure the flow of current. A snubber circuit consisting of a 10k ohm resistor is also placed to discharge the inductor at low amperage. Even with a 48 volt source and average current of 2.7 amps flowing through the solenoid, the peak current through the 10K resistor is merely 5 milliamps. However, the solenoid does not charge instantly. In fact, it takes about 40 milliseconds to reach an approximate steady state current. The peak current obtained also determines the discharge time of the solenoid, which in this case takes about 70 milliseconds. The solenoid must fully discharge before it is charged again. Otherwise, the magnetic field will be pulling the piston when it's not supposed to, and optimal electromagnetic force will not be achieved. All right. Uh, so let's do let's do uh, 200 RPM. Okay. All right. What you're seeing here is the voltage. These are two voltage sources in series, and this is the current rating. These work as voltmeters and ammeters. Okay. Here we go. It is currently limited to 200 RPM. Put it at 300. Hundred and twenty RPM. Put the hundred RPM. <laughs> All right. As you can see, it varies because of the force that it needs and 100 rpm is really slow it's about what is that two two revolutions in a second yeah okay and then turn it off many of the mechanical improvements include Almost airtight piston distance from solenoid spool. Also, a stable crank mount that does not wobble to reduce friction. 
In addition, a stable piston mount would be necessary since right now we have our solenoid spool zip tied. We can also minimize friction in the crank ends that touch with the crank mount, so right here. But the overall improvement is adding multiple pistons. This improves torque, RPM, and stability. A few improvements could be done to the control system. The first improvement would be allowing the user to input the desired RPM limit at any time even if the motor is running. So basically on the keypad in the back. This would allow the engine to accelerate or decelerate without coming to a complete halt before switching, switching speeds. Also a more efficient approach could have been taken with the Hall effect sensors and magnets. Having multiple sensors would allow more reliable readings due to the fact that the sensors have a wide detection area diminishing the need to place magnets in a reduced area as we did here. We can implement a circuit with quicker switching times. Currently the solid state relay takes 7 milliseconds to turn on and half a millisecond to turn off. The turn on time limits the maximum RPM to no more than a thousand. We can also use a more permeable piston for higher magnetic strength and therefore greater electromotive force. 